<clears throat> okay, welcome back. Repair escrows. I'm going to have some fun with this one, Jason. Okay. So I did an inspection yesterday, and actually we really didn't have uh, too many issues that I thought were substantive. But I, at least for some period of time, apparently failed to c clearly communicate that to the buyer. You know, we had some little things like there was a chip on the, uh, on the chimney flue where there was a couple of square inches that had fallen off and it could just be put back on with a little bit of adhesive, no harm, no foul. But there was little things like that that he thought, um, you know, we need, to, we need to get the sellers to take care of this. And then I told him things like, well, you know, sellers are not going to be motivated and they're not going to uh, want to do a good job. And, and so you're better off doing it yourself. But if you do it wrong, then... Um, then it looks like you're getting a kickback for buying the house. So all of that conversation leads into what we're going to talk about yeah. in this segment. This is the potential biggest problem most upset people that I've seen is at repairs and the escrows, negotiating repairs, which we'll cover next. Okay. This is just the repair escrows. Just the repair escrow. Okay, right. talk to me. Okay, so repair escrow is where you say... As a seller, I'm not going to do it. Mm -hmm. And the buyer says, it has to be done, but we don't have the money. And so the seller says, well, we'll leave this much money left over after closing to take care of it. The problem with this is, is it's a really clever way to be an inducement to buy. Right. Because the repair doesn't necessarily have to be done. And there's actually a provision in the REPC that it says if the repairs aren't done in so much time, the money goes to the buyer. So, oh, yeah, so the buyer does nothing, the buyer gets the money, and now we have an inducement to buy. Right, a zero down or a less than zero down loan. Yeah, and I've heard where people do actually have in the past gone to jail for things like this. Mortgage fraud, yes. Yeah. <laughs> this is, is a way to commit mortgage fraud, so it's touchy. So, yeah, how do, how do we do it right and how do we do it wrong? Okay, so there are a few ways to do it right, and that's... The underwriter says so is, is how it's done. Uh, a lot of times HUD homes uh, won't fix it, and those are allowed as a general rule on a HUD home. They say these are the repairs, this is the money we're going to leave for it, and that's okay. Other than that, check with your lender. Make sure the underwriter is okay with it. The workaround is this. So, and this happens fairly often. Um, Sellers selling their home, they know the carpets wore out. It, it's passable. But it doesn't look good. But they don't want to go and put their forest green carpet in that their mother loves because not many other people right now actually like forest green carpet. I'm sorry if you love forest green carpet. <laughs> anyway, but like it's, it's an issue. We could do all kinds of things. Or paint. You know, paint needs to be done. But it, it could be all kinds of different colors. Anyway, so uh, the buyer knows what they want, but they don't have the funds to do it. The seller will have the funds when the loan closes, but they don't have it right now. And so the... The clever thing to do is you have the buyers pick out what they want, let the sellers know what that is. Okay. They'll get a bid. They'll make the purchase on credit. So there's no money down. Uh, there's several retailers that work this way. So they'll pick out the, the sellers will pick out the carpet that the buyer wants. The sellers will do the purchase on credit, or could, it could be the buyers, either one? Sellers. It has to be the sellers. Sellers have to do it. Okay. So they'll pick everything the way, the sellers will pick everything the way the buyers want it. Okay. And then the lender will get the loan done. Everybody will sign. So there's no problems, no issues about the loan going through. Once they've signed, before it's funded, the repairs will be done. Okay, and the difference in time between signing and funding is usually what, two or three days? Typically, it's same day or one day, okay. but for the contract, the way the Utah State contract is written, it allows for four days. You can have four days in between closing and settlement, okay. signing and funding. So I'm thinking, all right, we, uh, we call whatever carpet store it is, and we say, okay, we just signed. Now we have to have carpet in before the four-day window is up. Or right. things below so up. it's pretty easy. I mean, you've got the CD these days with loans clear to close. You get the CD signed. You know when closing is going to be. 
So you make sure everybody signs. I always wait till everybody signs so no one gets cold feet. Because the worst thing that can happen mm -hmm. is that your sellers get the carpet that the buyers just love at ten thousand dollars, and the buyers say, "Oh, <laughs> we've decided we're moving to Detroit." You yeah. know? Yeah. And we'll talk about how to get this done in the contract mm -hmm. in the next part.